It's a pleasure to have you back at this second session of our webinar series that Kia Manglam University has organized. My name is Aditya Malik. I'm the Vice Chancellor of Kia Manglam University. And once again, it's a pleasure to have all of you on this webinar. It's a particular pleasure also and an honor to introduce today's speaker to you, Professor Shiv Kumar Kaushik. Professor Kaushik is a distinguished mathematician. He has taught for many, many years at Kirori Mal College. He is currently honorary professor in the Department of Mathematics at Kia Mangalam University. And he has been mentoring our undergraduate and postgraduate students now for the past year, approximately. And we're very, very honored and happy and privileged to have him as part of our faculty. Professor Shiv Kumar Kaushik's area of specialization is functional analysis, that is wavelets, frames, and bases. He has over 70 research publications to his credit, several edited books and textbooks. He has supervised over a dozen PhD students. He is the managing editor of Poincare Journal of Analysis and Applications and also a reviewer for math, mathematical reviews, the American Mathematical Society, and Zentralblatt Mathematik in Germany. He has many ongoing projects and is a member of the American Mathematical Society, Indian Mathematical Society, Ramanujan Mathematical Society, and the Society for the History of Mathematics. In 2015, Professor Kaushik was awarded the Delhi Gaurav Award by the Indian Brave, Brave Hearts an NGO that is supported by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. We're indeed very glad and happy and privileged to have you here today to speak to our students and faculty and wider audience. The topic of Professor Kaushik's talk today is some real life applications of calculus. As is the case in our webinars, there will be time at the end of Professor Kaushik's talk for some questions. Please put please insert your questions in the box at the bottom of the screen, which says q and I will then call out these questions and request Professor Kaushik to answer them. I'll now hand over the webinar and the talk to Professor Kaushik. Please, Professor Kaushik. Thank you, Professor Aditya Malik, Vice Chancellor of the University. Uh, good morning to one and all. I sincerely hope that you must be taking care of yourself and all your near and dears. I am thankful to Professor Dinesh Singh, Chancellor of the University, and Professor Aditya Malik, Vice Chancellor of K.R. Mangalam University, for taking this initiative in the middle of the lockdown of COVID-19 epidemic. And this has given me a chance to motivate you through some applications of mathematics. I am aware of the fact that the audience of this talk are students of different streams or disciplines and therefore I have kept the content very simple and easy to understand. I request all of you to please uh, listen this talk. Uh, it is, uh, I will just take 30 to 40 minutes and uh, with you uh, I will share the real life applications and in fact uh, mostly i have chosen the applications from uh, uh, biological sciences or medical sciences uh, and one application uh, that is a problem which uh, which is responsible for a creation of a very useful cow so i will discuss that too so let us begin with the talk Okay, the title you can see has some applications of calculus in real life situation. In this talk, we will learn some applications of mathematics and calculus in particular. Through examples, we observe or learn how tools from calculus are used to calculate the rate of flow of blood in small human artery to find the volume of blood that the heart pump out. 
per unit of time to calculate the growth of tumor and in this uh, calculation of growth of tumor we particularly find the the number of uh, number of cells which are responsible for the growth of tumor and finally we discuss the brachisto chorney problem so first i will discuss the pose law uh, which is responsible for calculating the rate of flow of blood in small human artery uh, you can see on your, your picture that uh, this is a, a sample of a small artery uh, which is uh, cylindrical in shape and uh, this this arrows are showing the velocity of the blood which is flowing through this artery and small r is the inner radius of this artery and capital r is the outer radius of this artery so let v denote the velocity of the blood the velocity v of the blood is greatest along the axis the central axis uh the reason is that uh, this this uh, the the walls walls of this uh, artery uh there is friction because some some uh you may say due to uh, the 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 friction is due to uh what you say some some known uh unwanted cells around this uh, wall wall of the artery and uh, because of this uh, the the velocity is maximum at the central axis and then it start reducing because of the friction and you see the this pattern this is a parabolic kind of a pattern and uh, smaller i already told you that this is we 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 just uh, consider this as the inner radius and capital r is the outer radius the velocity v decreases eventually and becomes zero at the inner radius uh, as the inner radius approaches the outer radius and that is uh, i already explained because of this phenomena that the velocity is uh, maximum at the central axis and it start reducing and eventually goes to zero uh, near the wall okay now we calculate the flow of blood so for that uh, uh, the, the the things which are uh, responsible for uh, the flow of blood are, are pressure at the two end points so we, we we consider the difference of these two pressure because this pressure that the blood pressure at the two ends is responsible it is higher at this end when from where it is flowing flowing down to this side and it is lower at this side so p denote the pressure difference between the ends of the artery or the tube nb we have taken as viscosity of the blood and viscosity is very important you see uh, uh, let me tell you the water has less viscosity so it flows uh, quickly and uh, if you consider honey honey has more viscosity so it flows slowly and what uh, this blood has viscosity in between the two so blood has viscosity and uh, the doctors can change the viscosity of the blood by by giving uh, everybody knows that aspirin is something which thinner the blood and so the viscosity is reduced by giving this medicine okay let l be the length of the tube so assuming p because p is the pressure difference at one point of time so it is a constant uh, thing so p and l are constant so assuming this p and l are to be constant so v is a function given by this formula and this is der derived by pose thus the velocity of blood that flows along the vessel with radius r and length l at a distance the central axis is given by this formula and if you want to know the derivation of this formula then you can take a snapshot of this screen i have given a link i don't know whether if i run this you can see this or not but you can watch this video and you can see the proof is explained of this formula then pose law gives us the final tool for uh, 
the rate of flow that is f is equal to the flux f is equal to pi p p is the pressure difference and r is the outer radius r to the power 4 8 in the denominator 8 times the viscosity and length of the artery so this is very important formula i will discuss uh, the, the see the, the it says that it shows that the flux is uh, proportional to the fourth power of the radius and this has a role to play we will discuss in three cases that what happens see there are three parameters the radius the pressure and this viscosity you see the the pressure is the blood pressure so the doctors can manage this pressure so what happens if pressure is more what happens if viscosity is less or more and what happens if the radius reduces the radius reduces because of the cholesterol is piled up on the walls of this artery so if your cholesterol is more so then the radius is reduced so so there are ways to increase this radius and what happens when we increase this radius so we all discuss these kind of things so let us first take an example to calculate this uh, flux in a small human artery. If length of the artery or tube is uh, 2 cm and radius of the artery is uh, 0 0.008 cm, you know the arteries are very thin, so I, that's why we have taken this very small radius. And let the viscosity of the blood is 0 0.027. And the pressure between the ends is uh, 4000 dynes that is the unit for measuring pressure per centimeter square and uh, we can calculate the rate of flow of blood in artery or flux this is the formula cause a law so if we substitute these values you can see so we come out with figure 1.19147 into 10 to the power minus 4 centimeter cube per second so this is the flux and now we discuss the three cases the basic queries in fact so what happens if pressure difference that is p is doubled so if pressure is too much you see the, the normal pressure uh, everyone knows so if the pressure difference is doubled so in this case P is taken to be 2P. So in this formula, in this Posey law, I take P to be 2P. So the result of 2P is nothing else but T, P will, 2 will come out and so it is 2F. So this means the flow rate is doubled. So if we increase the pressure, see this is a very, very rare to, to have this double pressure. So patient is in very critical condition if the pressure is doubled. So immediately the one has to admit the patient. So it's not that the pressure is always doubled suddenly. So pressure is increased in fact by some percentage. Okay. So, so if pressure is increased, so the rate you can see if the pressure is doubled, so the, the, the flux is doubled. So, so the pressure has to be handled and that can be handled by giving medicine or by prescribing some exercises or whatever it is, the doctor will decide by looking at the outflow, the rate of flow of the blood. The second is, what happens if radius is doubled? So if radius is doubled or it is shrinked to half, I mean, there, both the cases can be. So now look at the effect. If radius is doubled, then we just put R to be 2R here. And because R has power 4, so 2 to the power 4 means 16. So this becomes 16 times the rate of flow. So that is too much. So this means increase in radius changes the increase 16 times in the flow. So, so the radius, however, the radius can't be doubled. I mean, just increase. Most of the time, the problem is because of cholesterol, etc. The radius is reduced. So if radius is reduced and sometimes uh, if there is a full blockage, then the radius is almost zero. So in that case, the doctors have to uh, operate and uh, do bypass surgery or whatever it is. So that all depends on the radius. So 
actually when when, when the, the, they calculate the flux or rate of flow of blood so if the blood is very less i mean as compared to the normal uh, flow then they look for the uh, they, they, they check for the blockage or whatever happens, why this is happening, it is due to radius or what. So if radius is responsible, if, uh, for, for example, uh, if a small decrease in the uh, flow of blood, then the doctors may prescribe the mild exercises. You, you might have noticed that in the beginning, if the heart problem begins, then the doctors advise uh, exercises or brisk walk to these patients. Because exercises, by doing exercise, one can, uh, the, the, the arteries or the, the nerves, they, they relaxes and a slight increase in the radius happens. And that slight increase, in fact, is responsible for the more flow of blood. So, so this is the second query that uh, how the radius uh, is changed. And if, uh, by, for example, by, by exercises, the radius is not changed, then what happens is the doctor suggests for stunts. So stunt, what stunt do is that that increases the radius of the artery. Okay, so these are all all options for the doctors, and in fact, this uh, this mathematical calculation, this is responsible, and we are using calculus to arrive this uh, uh, Posey law. So these are all mathematical calculations, and these actually help the doctors to. To, to look at what kind of prescription or advice they, they want to give to the patient. And if there is a complete blockage, they can, they can advise surgery. Okay, let us talk the third, third query. That is, what happens if viscosity is half? If we reduce the viscosity by half, then see, this will go up and uh, we come out to be the, the, the flow is doubled. So if viscosity is half, then flow is doubled. This means if, if uh, the flow is less, then we can even uh, do something with the viscosity also. That is, we can dilute the blood by giving some medicines. And you know that the doctors most, mostly prescribe aspirin because aspirin thinner the uh, blood. So what happens is the viscosity is less in that case and so the flow increases. So these are all kind of things. Uh, we, the, through this uh, pose law, I mean, the doctors can think that they can do, they have options. In fact, uh, three, three options, you can see. They can even reduce the viscosity by giving medicines. They can uh, increase the, the radius of the uh, vessel or artery, or they can even uh, control the pressure uh, so that the patient has a normal flow of blood or flux. So this is uh, about the flow of blood. And now the second uh, application I want to discuss is the cardiac output. This is also related to heart. So let us move. For calculating the cardiac output, we have uh, many methods. So the most important method or most uh, widely used method is dye dilution method. So in this method, we shall find the rate of flow and we denote this by capital F. So this measurement is useful for doctors to judge the real working condition of the heart or the real potential of the heart to decide the course of treatment. And I have just uh, given a paper, uh, the title of the paper, which was published in 1990 in European Heart Journal, uh, that is based on the dye dilution method of measurement of cardiac output, you can see. So let us discuss this. So let me explain this method. So dye dilution method. So what we, we do is uh, this, this is the right uh, atrium of the heart. So dye, mostly in blue in color. See, so that dye, a particular quantity or a fixed quantity of dye is in injected in the right atrium. And that is mixed with blood. And then it moves with the blood and it, it reaches outer of the heart. This is outer. And here we place a probe to measure the concentration at, uh, at equal uh, intervals of time. So, so we divide the time interval into, uh, just see, the, the time interval is, for example, 10 seconds. So, so, so the time interval is 0 to 10. And if we want to fix it 60 seconds, 30 seconds, so time interval changes. Then we divide this time interval into sub-intervals. Uh, 
uh, of one second or two seconds, we can fix any any problem. In fact, the the smaller the interval is, so the the the, the better the uh, output. That is the the calculation is the error error field. So let's see CT with the concentration of dye at uh, time t. Now we divide this time interval zero to t in equal subintervals, and we say each subinterval is del t. Then the amount of dye that flows past the probe uh, from the measuring point during the time subintervals t equal to t i minus one to t i is concentration into volume. That is C T into F del T. So this is the calculation. The total cardiac output is given by this formula. That we are just summing up this intervals so i one to n. So this means we have divided the time interval into n n sub intervals. So we are summing this out by taking F out. So we are left with this. Now see uh, when we this this time intervals we want to reduce this to have a, a better approximation. So that is what uh, all about calculus. So in that case we let n tending to infinity in this case. So we we have this infinite sum that is equal to f times this infinite sum, and uh, this infinite sum is the Riemann sum kind of thing, and this is actually the amount of dye, total amount of dye. So this is a. So we have f into this Riemann sum, and uh, this Riemann sum can be expressed in terms of this integral. Uh, those who have studied Riemann integration, they may be aware of this. And uh, once it is uh, changed to this uh, integral, now we calculate this integral. Uh, so we, the value of f can be achieved. That is a oblique. This value of this integral. And uh, you can see that this integral, though students in class 12th, they have studied in calculus, uh, that this can be evaluated by Simpson rule also. Okay. So this is the formula for flux a upon this integral, where a is the amount of dye, and that is a known quantity b because we have injected that dye, so we know how much quantity we have injected. So that is known quantity. And this we will calculate by using either uh, Riemann integral or this Simpson rule. Uh, this was studied in class 12. Okay, so let us uh, take an example and calculate this. So a 5 mg bolus or short or dose of a dye is injected into right atrium. The concentration of dye in milligram per liter is measured in the aorta at one second interval as shown in the following. See this pattern of, you can see the concentration pattern at uh, zero seconds it is zero, then after one second it is 0 0.5 to 2.7. See this phenomena, why this is increasing and then start decreasing. You see, uh, you just imagine this, uh, this table as a tube in which, uh, for example, milk is running from this end to this end. Okay, so if you if you put uh, a fixed amount of blood inside this and see the, the the milk is moving, so as soon as you start putting this, so so milk is uh, start flowing, and if there is a probe here, then and you are measuring the concentration here, so in the beginning small concentration will be uh, will appear because it's it's flowing and you have put here. So small concentration will come, then the concentration will keep up in increasing and increasing. And then it will peak, uh, reach a peak and then start decreasing. And at most, the, all the blood which we have fixed, mixed here, that will finish. So this is the pattern. That's why we have taken this pattern. Okay. So let us estimate the cardiac output. So here in this example, uh, our A is 5 mg. And the difference is one second. We have divided the time interval as one second. And uh, T, the, the total time is 10 seconds. The cardiac output is given by F equal to this formula, A by this. So we have to calculate only this by simplest uh, Sim Simpson method or by Riemann integral. So Sim Simpson is very easy method. So let me discuss this because everyone uh, who is uh, uh, 
attending this uh, webinar is familiar with this Simpson rule. So, see, del t, del t in this case is 1, 1 second. So, 1, 1 by 3. And ct, you can see ct here. When x0 is 0, so, so it is 0. So, you can see here the value 0. c1 is uh, 1. So, c, c of 1 is 0. 0.5. So, we have 0. 0.5 here. And similarly, we have all these values. And we calculate these values and they are approximately equal to 44.27. And then we put this value here in this formula. So the flux or the cardiac output, this comes out to be A upon this, that is 5 over 144.27. And that's that come out to be 0 0.1129 per second. Or if we want to change this in per minute, we can multiply by 60. So this comes out to be 6.78 per minute. So this is uh, a, an application of calculus uh, for calculating cardiac output. Now the next uh, application I will discuss of uh, tumor growth. See tumor growth, you can see a photo of a tumor, it grows. And uh, the basic assumption is that uh, it start growing, growing. So the, when it grows or sometimes when, when doctors give medicine, it shrinks also. So we calculate the shrinking also, whether it's shrinking or not. So both ways we have to calculate the size of the tumor. The tumor, the growth may be positive, may be negative. So that is uh, the, so the calculation of tumor growth is very important to, to, to have a course of action for the doctor to decide whether the medicines are working correctly or not, whether we have to operate it because if, if the, the tumor growth is not stopped, or if it's not shrinking, then the doctor has to operate. So now let us see the, before going to surgery, one has the following queries in mind, how fast the tumor is growing or shrinking, how many cells make up this tumor, what is the volume of the tumor? Actually this main, the second one is the how many cells make up this tumor that answers uh, all the questions whether it is growing or shrinking or the volume, everything. So the main, uh, our main job is to, to know the, uh, the number of cells which make up this tumor. So for this, we have uh, again uh, various methods, but the most common or most uh, successful method is Gompertzian growth method. And in this method, the basic assumptions are the growth rate declines over the time due to prolonged uh, that cycle, uh, decreased oxygen, uh, decreased nutrient availability, and the, the increased number of uh, rate of cell deaths. So see the, the growth rate of a tumor declines. So when it declines, uh, if we have a prolonged uh, cell cycle, means if you cell cycle, if you prolong the cell cycle or just decrease the supply of oxygen or just decrease the, the nutrient availability to the uh, tumor cells and increase the death rate of cells. So if death rate of cells, if you increase the death rate, so then also the, 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 the growth of tumor declines. Uh, these are the various reasons how uh, the growth rate of a tumor declines. So the doctors uh, uh, choose which, which means they want to adopt for different patients. They use different methods. Uh, at the time, as the time approaches, you see, uh, mathematically to infinity and otherwise, I mean, nothing is infinite in real world. So, but mathematically we call this as in reaching infinity. So tumor has a limit means uh, this is not that the tumor keep on increasing, keep on increasing. No, there is a point where the, the growth of tumor automatically stops. So it has a limit. So by these assumptions, we have this Comparzian growth method. And that's why, because these are uh, all depends on the, these assumptions are all depends on the condition, the actual condition, the actual happening of the tumor. So uh, this Comparzian growth method is the best one. So here in this, uh, let V be the volume of a volume of uh, this uh, tumor at a certain time. W is the weight, and uh, A is the growth constant. These A and B are very important in this. 
A is the growth constant and uh, B is the constant for growth, abnormality or retardation. Then the mathematical model for this tumor is given by this formula. Okay, so this is for in, in terms of uh, volume and we can also write in terms of N. If we replace this V by N number of cells, so the same formula will work for that. So let us take an example and in example itself, I will uh, solve the, the, this uh, equation and then I will take these values. Okay, a tumor is growing at a constant rate of 0.4126 and with abnormality or retardation rate as this. So this is A in this case and this is B. So find the number of cells of this tumor. So A and B you know. So if N is the number of cells, then the model, that model, this model can be written in terms of N. So this is this model. Or now this is what? This is a differential equation. Okay. And we have to solve this. And you can see this is a very simple differential equation, which, uh, which we can uh, solve by separation of variables. So for that, we have to take this. This is function of N. So we take this to this side and this function of P that is dt, we take to this side. So by doing this, we got this equation one, which is uh, which we can be solved by separation of variables. So let us solve this. So if we take u, just take this value a minus b log n as u, then du is this, and therefore the equation one reduces to du upon minus bu e equal to dt, and by integrating we we got this, where c is the constant of integration. So this means if we take uh, exponential, so u equal to e to the power minus bt plus c, which we can express as c1 e to the power minus bt, where c1 is given by e to the power c. So a minus b log n is equal to u, which is c1 e to the power minus bt. And therefore, from here we can find the value of log n as a minus c1 e to the power minus bt upon b. And by taking exponential, we can easily find n. Uh, but first we, we, we handle this uh, c1. We have to find the value of c1. So to find the value of c1, we just put the initial condition. For, for example, in the beginning, when we start measuring this number of cells, suppose at time t equal to zero, the number of cells of that tumor are n naught then log n naught is given by this formula and so this will give you c1 the value of c1 as this and hence by substituting this c1 in n we got n equal to e to the power a by b minus c1 by b and put this c1 the value of c1 and now we replace the values of a and b of this example that is a equal to 0.4126 and b equal to 0 0.0439. So if we replace these values, so we have this value for number of cells, means these many number of cells we have in a tumor, according to that example. So now I think it's clear that the number of cells, if we know the number of cells at one point of time, for example, after 15 days or 20 days, we again check the number of cells. And if they are increasing, then we understand that the tumor is growing and if uh, it decreasing means the, the tumor is shrinking. So this is, uh, the, so the doctors can uh, uh, decide the course of action. Okay, let us come to the final uh, application. That is the brachisto chorney problem and that is very famous, uh, uh, related to very famous car and uh, you will come to know about this curve at the end of this uh, section. So what is this problem? <clears throat> Suppose uh, there is a point A which is joined by a point B through a rod and rod is frictionless and the point B is uh, at the lower side. And uh, suppose we fix a ball here at point A and slide, that ball is also frictionless and we slide, that ball slides uh, to along this this rod and reaches the point B. Now the question is, uh, we are not talking about the shortest distance. Shortest distance, we know this straight line distance. We are talking about what shape this rod should take 
you can see this what shape this rod should take so that it takes minimum possible time from a to reach the point b whether this is a straight line will work out or we have this kind of or we have a circular path or what kind of path. so that is the problem so galileo he start this in the, the he was the first one to to attempt this if one consider motion with the same initial and terminal points then the shortest distance between them being a straight line one might think that the motion along a straight line needs least time but that's what that's not the true okay so this uh, this straight line i mean this uh, was uh, declared by galileo in 1638 that uh, straight line is the best uh, curve to have the minimum time reaching the ball from a to b Uh, in 1696, John Bernoulli. Actually, Bernoulli's were two brothers, Jacob and John. So, in 1696, John Bernoulli posed a more general question. He imagined the rod bent into the shape of a of an arbitrary curve, and asked the the mathematician at that time. At that time, the mathematicians we see the very well known mathematicians. Leibniz was there. Uh, uh, Newton was there. And and many more with the, these two Jacobi Bernoulli's were there, so <clears throat> he asked which curve among the infinitely many possibilities will will give the shortest time of descent. And he he published this all his curves which he made in this uh, paper. At that time, in this form, this uh, the papers were published. You see, he has given thirteen curves. Okay, then it was this problem was attempted by Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, Newton at that time working in a mint uh, from morning to evening, and because he has uh, he is fond of mathematics, his passion to solve problems of mathematics. So uh, coming home in the evening, he start uh, solving problems. So he came to know about this problem. And you know, he he solved this problem before going to bed at night. And what he does in his solution that he used tools from optics, mechanics, and calculus. In fact, uh, these are the three laws he used: Snell's law for light refraction, Fermat's principle of least time, and principle of conservation of energy. Uh, he used these three laws to solve this problem. Actually, uh, by using these laws, what he does is he he formulated this problem in this differential equation. In this differential, and the differential equation is not very complicated. This is simple differential equation: y into one plus p squared equal to p, where p is dy by dx. And let's see this solution. I solved it for you, uh, just to see that it is so simple. So this is the differential equation because p we have changed this here. So now dy by dx is p minus y. We take this y to this side and this y, and then it's half power square root of this. So dx is now dy. So we will take this y dy this side. So d dx is y by p minus y. That is, this will be reversed to the square root and d. If we put this quantity to 10 phi, then this reduces to y by p minus y equal to 10 square phi, or y equal to I will take this to this side and then combine. So p 10 square phi 1 minus 10 square phi, and which is equal to p sine square phi by using the trigonometrical formulas, we can reach this. So in this way, you can say he also used trigonometry. So we use uh, many things, but mainly he used those three laws. So this means dy equal to two p sine phi cos phi d phi, and thus dx is given by ten phi d phi, which is equal to this if we substitute, and ultimately we reaches x equal to this and y equal to this. So this you know is the standard parametric. 
equation of what of a well known curve cycloid okay and you know how to do this uh, draw this cycloid so cycloid is generated by a point on the circumference of a circle of radius a rolling along the x axis and this is you can see this this is the point if this will roll along x axis then this will generate this cycloid and if you want to know more about this this uh, i mean how to generate it this is uh, a video of this it, it shows it generating i don't know whether if i run this will be shown in the uh, this or not but you can take this uh, screenshot and you can run at your uh, mobile or uh, pc and you will see that how this is the cycloid is formed so you may also if you want to have uh, this whole how it is being uh, uh, derived the formula is how it is derived if you want to know the at what stage this uh, these three laws were applied by newton so this whole you can uh, see this video here the proof is given to all all the uh, rules which uh, newton applied and reached that formula uh, that differential equation which ultimately solution of which ultimately gives us the the, the curve cycloid now these are some of the books uh, <clears throat> i'm mentioning uh, everyday calculus very good book and calculus and its applications and here you can see this, this book uh, advanced calculus with applications in statistics so these are very good books uh, you can take a screenshot and uh, you can go through these books uh, those who are interested in doing this calculus uh, because the application of calculus uh, i mean nobody knows uh, at what stage you can do uh, something new because uh, all mathematical models if you if you just look at the uh, the textbooks ncrt books uh, from class 9th to class 12th so though it's not a main chapter uh, in these books but uh, in the appendix you will find that uh, mathematical modeling there is appendix in uh, every book uh, from 9th to 12th so that is mathematical modeling so we we, we make models and then we solve these models so you can even make models of various projects and then solve so there we use a lot of mathematics in particular calculus because calculus is the beginning of the the the, the it is connected with the real life situations because it has approximation we just give approximate values uh, solutions uh, to the, the the problems and uh, in fact in real life also see if i am wearing uh, glasses so the glasses doesn't give me the original sight but it gave me the approximate approximate uh, sight very near to the original one so so in real uh, life also we, we we are living in approximation and the calculus is uh, the one thing which is uh, related to our real life problems only so i hope that uh, you have enjoyed this talk and uh, it may may prove to be useful for many of you though it's a very elementary level talk because uh, the audience is such that i have to make it elementary uh, so if uh, next time if you want me to be a specialized talk i can go for that also okay thank you yeah, i'd like to thank uh, professor koshik for this very uh, illuminating talk particularly also that he's explained something which i'm sure is very complex in uh, very simple terms and what's become clear to me by listening to you is also the applicability of mathematics and calculus in areas particularly medical science that are critical to our the existence of an individual uh, which you pointed out and i also congratulate you for doing this kind of research that would in future and currently also support uh, those people who are in need of some kind of medical resolution through an application of uh, mathematical equations and procedures um, there are some questions if 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 you'll allow i'll go through these questions and we can see how much time we'd like to uh, take on them um, sure. one of the questions from aryan kumar prasad and this relates to the first uh, example that you were talking about the blood vessels and the flow of blood 
through the blood vessels and the change in the radius of the uh, of the arteries. Yes. So Arun Kumar Prasad is asking, won't the change in radius of blood vessel result in change of pressure? Yeah. No, no. Uh, actually, the radius of uh, change of uh, in radius also the pressure is fixed. So when when we change this at that point of time, the, the in the beginning when when we are calculating the pressure is fixed, okay. When we change this, then the pressure certainly will change. But that that is actually we we want to give the the the, uh, the patient if the patient has some problem with the radius. So if we change the radius, certainly at that by changing the radius, the pressure will also change. But in the beginning, when the pre, when the pressure was fixed. So we are calculating the radius. So we know that the radius is needed to be changed. So the moment the cha it changes, so certainly the pressure will also change. The pressure difference will change. Thank you. Uh, then the second question is from Kunal Kumar, and I'll uh, read it out to you because it's somewhat technical. He's saying, sir, the whole point for deriving this equation, again, I think he's talking about the first example, mm -hmm. was, I guess, finding pressure and force. So we can find this by using Bernoulli's equation 2. A1 V1 equals A2 V2 and substituting the area by force slash pressure. Mm -hmm. So what is special about this equation that Bernoulli's equation cannot do? Actually, I haven't uh, come across this equation, uh, actually. Uh, for this talk particularly, I have uh, seen this method. So I, I already discussed that there are various methods to, to reach this uh, formula, but that is the best possible method. So I have discussed. There are various methods, not only this, there are other methods also. But because this is the method which, is, uh, which gives the best approximation for calculating this kind of thing. So I, I went ahead by this formula. That is the Ose's laws. Mm -hmm. So that is, and it's still, it's, it's widely used by, by most of the medical fraternity. And so I go on with that because this is in medical, you need the, the exit, near exact values. So this method is uh, used by most of them. So I, I pick that method mm -hmm. as an application of calculus. Right. Um, then there's one more uh, general question, which I'm sure all of us today in the, uh, current state, we find ourselves in the lockdown and pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an anonymous attendee who's asking how mathematics can be applied or be more useful in the current pandemic COVID-19. So it's slightly off perhaps from the topic, but yeah, yeah. if you'd like to add something as a mathematician. Yeah, yeah. Actually, if you look at this, uh, the, 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 the uh, medical setu, Arogya setu app, so there, there the distancing uh, is, is used. I mean, the, the, what it says, it finds the distance between the persons. So mm -hmm. who, who are, uh, I'm at what distance to a person. So in right. this, the use of mathematics is there, already there. Right. So, so, so this way, I mean, uh, mathematics is being used continuously. Sure, yeah. Yeah, and we also heard this in Professor Singh's talk yesterday, how the use of data to understand the the spread and also the decline of, uh, you know, the, the, the virus in different countries, including India. So yeah. this is also an application of mathematics or data science. Certainly. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a question by Dr. Yogendra Kamar Rajodia. He's asking, is it possible to determine cardiac output and pressure from Xander formula? Uh, this I, yeah, yeah, yeah. This I don't know, but but there are many formulas I discussed in that. That there are yeah. various formulas to find the flux. In fact, the fluid uh, fluid dynamics. There yeah. are ways, but in medical science, when we we, we use this medical science, we, we 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 use only trusted methods. I don't know uh, whether that method is trusted or not. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not it's fine. And let's see, the, maybe the last uh, question is, uh, can we use or what is the application? Is there an application of calculus in fields of statistics, for example, that you would yeah, know? Yeah, I've just shown you, I yeah. just shown you the book, uh, the yeah. full book, 
yeah, the calculus uh, applications of in fact advanced calculus is uh, widely used in statistics right. in fact uh, there is a full branch in statistics where uh, the mathematics uh, i mean uh, this this calculus applications of calculus are used hmm. uh, that book is there one can uh, go through that's why i collected these books sure yes. uh then the maybe the last question now I, i don't know if you'd like to answer it or how one can answer this i think it's a good question uh it's a somewhat critical question also he's saying that how does one start this question how does one start to derive these formulas and equations you know where does one begin uh, if you yeah. can give some idea you know where does one look how does one come to these conclusions actually if uh, if uh, you you see the last problem which i discussed that is bachisto chorney problem mm -hmm. so there you see the people uh, most of the people i i, I just send and that's why i given because the time limit was there so i have given the 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 links from where they they can see the proof of that so there there is a story of this proof how how we reached so what happens is in the beginning everyone thought that the straight line will give you the the least possible time then there is a time principle also then snell's law so the the, the refraction that the, the rays goes from this side and then turns like this so that also shows a, a curve kind of a thing so when you prove something you initiate so it goes very slowly and and there there, there can be different kind of ideas and in fact if you look at the proof then you will come to know that uh, how uh, difficult or i mean so much you see the time period also around 50 years took uh, to solve that problem so in the beginning it takes time but uh, but you have to apply different uh, kind of thing you, by doing a simple one one concept that doesn't work so you have to mix various concepts to reach that uh, but the beginning you can do from any Mm -hmm. okay thank you so much i think that's fascinating thank you for your talk and explaining things to our students and also the faculty in such a, a clear and also simple manner and uh, i think it's become clear to everyone that things we may not think about you know mathematics and calculus they have very real life applications and applications that are very close to us that concern our own survival in many cases um So uh, thank you again for being on the talk. I also thank all our viewers for being here today, and uh, Professor Kaushik, we look forward to having you on campus again once the lockdown is uh, lifted. Um, okay. I also wanted to add that Professor Kaushik is mentoring our postgraduate students uh, to prepare themselves to take up, possibly take up, uh, full fully paid uh, PhD fellowships at the University of Houston. we have an agreement with the university of houston and they have uh, and they have agreed uh, as part of this memorandum of understanding to fund five phd students in mathematics and five in physics and yes. professor koshik has been very uh, keenly involved in, uh, in forwarding this proposal at k mangalam university to which i also would like to thank you yeah thank you uh, yeah. before we end i'll just make a brief announcement that tomorrow uh we have uh, professor uh, krishnan lal who is the cv raman chair in physics who will be talking to uh, our viewers uh, professor krishnan lal is uh, the co-chair of 140 national science academies all over the world he was the former director of the national physical laboratory and currently he is cv raman chair in physics so please join us also tomorrow those viewers who are interested in listening to professor krishnan lal once again i thank you professor koshik and all our viewers for being here with us today thank you sir thank you sir